So let's talk about AI adoption. Uh, maybe we can tr start with, uh, with you, Stas. You're a software provider, and then uh, get some feedback also from Peter and Jason. What's, what's AI adoption? What, how is this affecting uh, the market? Well, of course, we can't have a panel without AI, and uh, AI is, uh, is, is real from what we're seeing from a uh, software side. Uh, uh, virtually every customer we have, uh, because SaaS is a provider of advanced analytics, we've been around for uh, 48 years, and uh, we've been seeing this uh, big shift in AI. Now, how to make AI uh, useful and actually generate ROI, that's, uh, th that, that's a bit more challenging. And so right now from a hype side, we're kind of going towards the disillusionment part of that. That does not mean that it, it's not going to drive uh, positive outcomes uh, going forward. For example, it, it's, re it's really good at uh, segmentation and detection. And we see a number of uh, banks and insurance companies utilizing it to do hyper-personalization, which is really changing the nature of customer experience and uh, uh, ultimately better tailoring the products and, uh, and the outcomes, which, which is a win-win on, on both sides. I mean, we see it as a huge uh, you know, boost in productivity, especially on the research side. I mean, uh, you know, it's, it's like a research assistant on steroids. It, it's really useful. I mean, you still have to have a human in the loop. And so then it also creates a uh, uh, stronger demand for subject matter experts, the ones who can tell whether it's a hallucination or whether something is, uh, is, is real. And that, uh, you know, that, that changes kind of the, the, the nature of the, uh, the, the, the employment landscape as well. And so that goes back to the whole great bifurcation theme uh, again, is that they are going to be winners. They're going to be winners uh, among the, the, the corporates who will adopt AI and who will see those productivity gains. And there will also be companies who will, uh, who will fall behind or whose uh, business models are, are going to be disrupted. So I think the implication of the AI is really uh, that active management now is more important than ever. And I think there will be a lot more opportunities for uh, active managers uh, going forward be because do, of the disruption. Do, do, you, do you slice and dice public data, or you also slice and dice alternative data? So for our data offering, it's, it's primarily based on, on public data. Uh, and uh, we, we are using traditional uh, regression methodologies because explainability in prediction is of paramount importance. Again, as I mentioned before, AI is greater detection and greater segmentation and greater dimensionality reduction. But uh, without knowing exactly why you have a forecast, uh, you, you can't really act on that. And so that. Uh, so Peter, AI adoption, uh, how does it affect uh, stock market bond yields and, in, in your opinion? Well, the, the first AI papers were written in 1950. So AI is not new. We're really talking about like the new iteration of it. And one of the uh, interesting comments from the CEO of Microsoft, uh, Satya Nadella, in their second quarter earnings, said at the end of the day, AI, generative AI is just software, which it is. But software, every new iteration of software, every new iPhone, every new uh, Microsoft product, every piece of software constantly gets better. Now maybe this is a further leap in terms of improving the software and our ability to uh, be more efficient and more productive and, and utilizing it. So from our perspective and how we use it, it's just another enhancement to the software that we use. Again, hopefully this is like a further leap. Now from uh, the stock market side and how do you make money, you know, that's still the debate because when you're spending the many billions of dollars to build this out, you know, it will take time for those developers to reap that benefit. Uh, so I, I think it's, it's just, it's, technology is an incredible thing, and this is just another form of it that, that this year it's better than last year, and last year was more improved from the year before. So I think just to have some of that you know, perspective with this. Thanks, Peter. Jason? What? So AI is kind of all, all encompassing in many ways, and I like to try and think about it in terms of like the known unknowns and the unknowns that are unknown to some extent. What we know right now is, and, and Stas alluded to, like there's a hype cycle that's probably, there's a little bit of cynicism, like where's the return on investment thus far? But it also seems like, and you hear this from the CEOs, and we'll know in the next three days, as, as, as five of the MAG7 report, that the CapEx spending just keeps get, keep getting ramped up. Like, so you're still building the infrastructure, uh, Jensen Wang recently kind of, you know, at another conference kind of said like the demand essentially is insane. Um, I'm not sure how to quantify it, but it's like, you know, obviously just keeps going higher. There doesn't seem like in the near term, meaning the next six, 12 months, that's going to abate. Um, so that, that aspect seems real and legitimate. Uh, when you look at the stock market performance, though, there's clearly differentiation between NVIDIA, 
a few other clear beneficiaries. I think people think Microsoft will be a clear beneficiary, but stocks that are sort of of the second order have done, that are AI related have done next to nothing this year. Like they've definitely kind of you know differentiation on that. So I think that's sort of what we know with some confidence. Three years down the line, how are companies going to monetize it? That still remains to be seen. Then I think about a little more of the macro perspective. What are the implications? Uh, one is just the amount of investment. Like, like we're talking about four companies that combined could spend $150 billion this year on investment. Like that is big enough to have a macroeconomic impact. You're seeing stories like this morning of, of like, you know, nuclear small scale kind of nuclear factories to, to try and power this generation investment that has to take place there. So the spinoff effects for the economy overall are not trivial at this point in time. Mm -hmm. The biggest unknown is ultimately like, how does this improve worker productivity? It's a software tool we know from the 80s and 90s has had real implications, positive implications. It's still very early in terms of assessing those implications. The adoption rate, if you look at things like people using chat GPT versus you know, internet or iPhone, like it's a faster adoption rate. There's a thought that because it's already integrated or can be integrated into software tools, your phone, that people will use these tools more quickly. Um, I'll have a better answer in two weeks because I know internally in our systems, like in HR, there's supposed to be AI tools that'll help you write performance reviews. So we'll see if it actually saves me time or not. So I'll have a bit of a more clarity in the next two weeks on that. Uh, is it enough to ultimately kind of be kind of a game changer, really left productivity in a positive way? Probably the question is really the time and the magnitude, and that might be two, three years down the line at yeah, least. 